Well, right at 1 in the morning, too. 14 hours of college football consumed. I'm ready. You're ready. Let's do this recap. And I think you all know what the thumbnail is going to be for tonight. But we'll, we'll get to that in a moment. We will get to that in a moment. As I don't know what in the world's going on outside. It's 1 a.m. and somebody's deciding to play loud music. But uh, week four. Crazy. Wild. Bizarre. That's, that's just how it is with college football. And, you know, the upsets came. I thought we weren't going to get any at first because, you know, I mean, the way things played out for some of these games, I didn't think we were going to get some at first. But then the results started popping, and they started popping off real good. First things first, let's get some other notes out the way here is that Sacramento State, they are the eighth FCS team to beat an FBS foe this year. They blew out Colorado State, and Colorado State is pretty bad. So, um, yeah... That's not a good sign. App State blew a 28-3 lead. The James Madison, you know, the same James Madison that can't play for, you know, a bowl game or a conference title this year due to transition rules, you know, the outdated transition rules. Yeah, not a good look there for App State. You know, all that momentum, you know, def definitely a wild ride for them so far this season, but... Two and two, not a good look right there. I mean, then you got little Kansas. They are going to be ranked. They have a dynamite stud quarterback. They're four and zero now. They beat Duke, played Duke real tough, and beat them. You think you think that sounds like a basketball thing? But no, this is football, baby. <laughs> this is football, and it's it's wild. So let's get to some of these other games first before we um, talk about some of the bigger ones. Uh, you had Kent State, Georgia, which ended like, or rather it started like game day was like, uh, you know, ending at late at later than usual. And Kent State, Georgia had already started over on ESPN+. Plus. Brock Bowers is out here being a beast. He had two rushing touchdowns. But the problem with all that is... Is that Georgia allowed a lot of points in this game? They allowed 22 points in this game. Yeah, they put up 39, but there, there, there was some things wrong here, and you know, they they just got caught off guard. This is the type of thing you don't want to see if you're a Georgia fan. They couldn't keep up with the tempo of the Golden Flashes at some points. They had three turnovers. These are things that are causes for concern. So that's got to be fixed real quick. Penn State, same thing. They struggled for a little bit with Central Michigan. But luckily, again, you know, Sean Clifford had four touchdowns in this game. W achieved for the Nittany Lions. Pittsburgh took care of Rhode Island. Israel Abaniconda, he had four touchdowns, over 100-plus yards, over 150-plus. It was like 177. Panthers cruise. You know, Ole Miss, they had to grind it out against Tulsa. You know, they didn't, they didn't do anything in the second half. But with Sean Judkins, Jackson Dart, who is now the starter for Realsies for the Rebels, they, they, they did beat the Hurricanes in this game, the Golden Hurricanes, I mean. Uh, Kentucky, you know, they had a close game with Northern Illinois, and I was very shocked at this, too. Uh then I realized the Huskies, you know, defense was playing the Cats real close. You know, they sacked Will Levis five times in this game, but the deal breaker with that is, is that Levis had four touchdowns passing. So he, he's, he's he's out here being efficient. We all know this is a this might be a Kentucky team that's you know moving up a little bit more. We we could be seeing a top five Kentucky team at some point. I think. In the next couple of weeks, like the number eight now, they could be moving up a little bit more. But we'll talk about that in a moment. UConn, they got beat by NC State. I mean, come on now, Devin Leary with the four TDs he had, easy, easy business there for the Wolfpack. And then Wyoming, they 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 kept up with BYU for a little bit, but ultimately, Sharon Hall's four touchdowns proved to be a bit too much. 
The running game for the Cougars is there now. They're doing they're doing their things in the ground, and you know the Cougs, you know they they're they're in, they're in a good spot. Good for, they're in a good spot. You know they could still do some damage. You know the way this season's looking, they can honestly still end up in the top twelve. In my honest opinion, they still could. We'll see what they can do um, as the season goes on. So let's go to the let's go to the big games here. Noon, 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 noon. Maryland, Michigan was a meat grinder. We're talking Talia Takabailoa and the Terps. They went up to the big house to take on Michigan. And although Maryland had some fight at them, they had some fight at them. Blake Corum said, I'm going to run all over y'all. And that's exactly what he did. Over 200 yards rushing. You know, J.J. McCarthy was looking kind of sus out there. I mean, man's really couldn't do too much. Luckily, three turnovers, four spot of Wolverine's defense, two bad picks by Talia. One of them was real bad. That was just like, uh, I was like, why would you throw that? And ultimately, you know, Michigan was able to escape with a victory. A lot of concern here because Michigan's offense could do things at times. Um... You know that that's that's just the nature of the course. You play three cupcakes to start the season. You don't you don't beef up. You could have played UCLA, but you didn't want to do that. So you know it is what it is. You know Big Ten play start. You can't have that. You cannot have games like this. Uh, Clemson Wake Forest was a shootout, a crazy game, which got interrupted by baseball. I know. I know. Multiple times throughout the day because ESPN wanted to track, you know, the 61st home run of Aaron Judge for whatever reason. I do not care about baseball and I do not care about that record and I don't think it's even the actual record. Even I know this because I actually look up stuff for baseball from time to time. And that's this it that's the AL record. That's not the whole league record. The, the whole league record is like 72, 73 home runs. So uh, who cares? Baseball is 162 games a mid. And I can't believe <laughs> this Clemson Wake Forest game got interrupted so many times for that. And it interrupted the start of the Texas Texas Tech game too. But mostly if you watch Auburn, Missouri, which that game was wild. And it did it a weird way with Missouri just bumbling you know, in the end zone late. But that's not the point here. Clemson Wake Forest, DJ Uilagale, Sam Hartman, they dueled until overtime, in which, unfortunately, an overthrow by Hartman ended the game. You know, Hartman was cutting up this Clemson defense with the fade routes and the go routes and stuff like that. We all knew Wake Forest's defense was pretty bad. So, DJ, you know, having the confidence to... You know, throw five touchdowns like that. I mean, some of these touchdowns were easier than others. So, you know, Clemson's the good spot. Wake Forest may not be ranked next week, but we'll see what we'll see what the AP does because they were not the only top twenty-five team to lose today. We were guaranteed at least three, but we well, we got more than three that lost today. We'll talk. We'll, and again, we'll, we'll oh wait, hold that thought. We're going to talk about that team right now because I forgot about them and the others. That's right. Middle Tennessee. Middle Tennessee. Chase Cunningham. Yeah. Oh, they, they, they beat up on Miami. Like, what is this? We're talking. The Canes had three turnovers all within, like, the first few minutes of the game. We're talking... They got boat raced. The defense got boat raced on big plays on multiple occasions. Chase Cunningham, four touchdowns in the game, three passing, one running. Miami's out the top 25 too. So, you know, there, there's that with the ACC. So that's good, right? That's good. You know, Miami, you know, some people said they were a CFP contender. Yeah, that Miami. Not anymore. Just a terrible two straight weeks for the Hurricanes. Just like that. Absolutely disgusting. 
Wake Forest could be in the same position, you know, if they don't get their defense together. They have Florida State next week. Um, and then Baylor, Iowa State, um, to wrap up the noon games, as Blake Shapin finally grew a pair and threw three touchdowns in this game. The Bears defense, until the fourth quarter, they shut down the Cyclones to the point where, you know, again, it was surprising that this, that this game had as many points as it did. I thought it was going to be an offensive slugfest. A lot of people thought that as well, and that is not what happened. Baylor put up 31 points in this game, which is saying a lot. And then in the afternoon, I don't know what in the world happened in the afternoon because a lot of things crazy happened in the afternoon as Florida, Tennessee, Texas, Texas Tech, and Oregon, Washington State were all burying degrees of what what is this? What kind of game are we watching right now? Florida, Tennessee first. Anthony Richardson, he finally threw a couple touchdowns. He ran for two more, but in the end... It was the Hendon Hooker show, and you knew it was his show. I mean, we're talking. He had over 400 yards by himself. Four TDs in this game for Hendon Hooker. Tennessee had all the momentum. They were they were on top of things for a majority of this game. And even though Florida almost got a... Touchdown at the very end due to recovering an onside kick. Tennessee, they overcome their demons. They beat Florida, which is good. Good for college football because we knew Florida was fraudulent. They were pretty fraudulent. You know, they 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 just they just Florida just has not played very good football, and their defense reflected that today. Now, Tennessee's defense did not play very good either at times, but Tennessee made more plays in the end. And then you had Texas, Texas Tech, in which, you know, some people are going to blame the fumble at the end on B. John Robinson when, in reality, B. John didn't even get the ball more than 20 times. He got the ball less than 20 times. You, you already know who I'm assigning the hashtag college coaches play, um, you know, you know, moment of the week to, and that is Texas, Texas Tech for both teams. Oh, you, th you thought I was going to go with just Sark here. No, both teams here, absolutely mind-boggling nonsense in this game. And it's pretty much the entire game with both of these teams. You know, we're talking Texas Tech ran over 90 plays in this game. Went for it on fourth down on multiple occasions. Failed on multiple occasions. Texas, on the other hand, one occasion, they went for it on fourth down in the Wildcat. And failed to conservative play calling. Both defenses, really more so Texas's defense, being completely inconsistent with things, and it, it's just like, you know, what 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 is going on here? The Red Raiders, um, really, they should have won this game in regulation, and instead, <laughs> we really had to go to overtime. We really had to go to overtime, and again, the fumble by B. John, which is really, you know, wild considering that's like only like his third or fourth fumble lost in, in his career so far. So I, 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 I don't know. Texas is not going to be ranked next week. And Texas Tech, you know, your game for next week was already set for ESPN+. Plus. <laughs> the mouse said no linear TV for you. And then Oregon, Washington State, oh dear lord, the ref ball moment of the week has to go to this game. What in the world was that sequence? We're talking a grounding call on Cam Ward. It's supposed to be, you know, third down and everything, you know. It's not. They had Washington into the punting, you know, because they incorrectly made the call to where it was like, you know, they made it from like, you know, loss of down. 
And now the refs are like, it's fourth down when it really should be like third down. They had to do the play all over again. They had to do the whole sequence all over again. What do you mean? What are what in the world is wrong? Maybe maybe you know people were right. Pac-12 refs really are that bad. My goodness, you know I don't, I don't really care what kind what conference you're in. I just say you know the refs are refs. They do not care about anybody. They are here for that paper, and they are here to make things a living hell for everybody. And that's exactly what they did in Oregon, Washington State. What in the world was this call? One. It's got to be up there with the Alabama-Texas call. Got to be up there. One of the worst calls of the season, by far. But the actual game itself, Wazoo, they 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 cooped it, as they say, because they had this game won. We're talking Bo Nix through a pick six that was classic Bo Nix. But then the Cougars' defense decided to act like a wet fart, just. Just simmering and smelling terrible, playing terrible in the second half. We're talking the Ducks score 29 in the fourth quarter. Bo Nix with a huge touchdown play. And then right after that, a pick six. So bizarre that it ended the game. And I was just like, you know what? I don't even know anymore. But Oregon... Still alive, baby. They're still alive in this, in the Pac-12, and in the CFP race. Because again, we don't know how things are gonna go with the CFP this year because of how things have been going. You know, like I don't think anybody expected, you know, Oregon to still be in this. I, I think a lot of people expected Oregon to lose to BYU last week, and that didn't happen. That didn't happen at all. And then in the evening, Arkansas, Texas A&M in Jerry World. You know, you had Jerry Jones watching, of course. K.J. Jefferson, you know, he played another solid game, three touchdowns. But unfortunately for the Hogs, the Aggies had a little bit of luck on their side. We're talking K.J. Jefferson decided to dive for a touchdown, you know, because Arkansas had a 14-0 lead. Then Texas A&M took the lead back. And, you know, during that sequence, K.J. Jefferson decided, you know, he was going to try and get a touchdown by diving into the end zone. But that didn't work because Tariq Chappelle took the ball away. You know, it, you know Jefferson fumbled. And then Tariq Chappelle flipped on. You know, he, he had the ball at like the 18 yard line, flipped it all over to Damani Robinson, or rather Richardson, not Robinson, I'm thinking of B. John Robinson, but I meant Damani Richardson, and he flipped it to him, and he took it 82 yards to the house. And I'm just like, what? What do you mean? Ain't no way. One of the, one of the gotta be a play of the year type moment right here, cause like, how? It, it, improbable, completely implausible that that happened. But wait, that's not all. Because Arkansas had the ball to win the game. And this is not the first time this has happened this season. It happened in an earlier game, which I don't remember what the game was. But Arkansas, unfortunately, with the hashtag college kickers moment of the week, by missing a kick off the upright. Off the top of the upright. And they lose. Hilarious. In the worst ways possible for both teams. Like, CBS is probably, you know, salivating at the fact that AM won this game right now because I don't think they would have wanted a two loss AM in that, in that late game, you know, in a couple of weeks against Alabama because we all know they're picking that game. But Arkansas, man, that's that's a tough way to lose. I mean, Arkansas looked like they were going to blow out A&M. Like, A&M had no momentum whatsoever. And yet, A&M just had the luck on their side. Too bad, so sad. It is what it is. All right, let's talk about the other top three teams real quick. Alabama, Bryce Young, four TDs. Ty Cruz over Bandy. 
Ohio State. We're talking C.J. Stroud had five touchdowns. Um, Trevion Henderson, Mayan Williams, they had over 200 yards combined. The Buckeyes defense just demoralized Wisconsin to the point where you you, you still wonder why Graham Mertz is a quarterback, you know, at, at the highest level. Like, just go down to D2, bruh. Let Braylon Allen, you know, run the show because, my goodness, Wisconsin's not good. They're not. Also, Michigan State isn't good either. You can't you can't throw that excuse at me anymore because Minnesota blew them out too. And I I'm I'm just kind of shocked right now. You know, why is the Big Ten West so bad? Why? Except for Minnesota, but why is the Big Ten West so bad? Why? I don't know. I don't know, man. But then you have you know a couple games you know that kicked off a little later after, you know, some of these others. And that was Kansas State, Oklahoma, and USC, Oregon State. Now, again, USC, Oregon State was relegated to the Pac-12 network. We'll talk about Kansas State, Oklahoma first because Adrian Martinez played like he was about to win the Heisman or something because he ran all over the Sooners' defense. Him and Deuce Bond did. I mean, we're talking, he had five touchdowns, four of them rushing. The Sooners defense couldn't keep up. I mean, sure, Dylan Gabriel threw four touchdowns or whatever, but, you know, the Sooners were trailing pretty much the entire game. And, I mean, they couldn't make the plays when it counted. When they, when they could have stopped Adrian Martinez, they did not. They just let him keep running big play after big play after big play with his legs. Why? Oklahoma, I thought your defense was better than that. Lincoln Riley's not there anymore. He's at USC. And we'll talk about this USC team right now. Because I don't think this USC team is going to make it. <laughs> They're not going to make it very far. You know, the way they play it tonight against an Oregon State team that, again, had a thriller against Fresno State, the same Fresno State that USC blew out, but yet they allowed 400 yards to, you know. USC played terrible. They should have lost this game, but luckily, Chance Nola threw four interceptions, and that allowed... You know, Caleb Williams, Travis Dye, Jordan Addison, the trio, to finally get something together and win this game for the Trojans as they stay undefeated. They'll be, well, actually, they'll probably stay at the same position in my, or rather, they'll move up like one spot. And I don't think they really deserve to really move up or do anything. They probably need to move down, you know, because I mean, USC played horrible tonight, and he played, it haven't really looked great the entire season. Yeah, the offense looks flashy, but there's just, there's just, you know, problems. Like, you can poke that offense, and they got poked, and they couldn't take it tonight. You know, they couldn't take it, and, you know, again, it took four interceptions from this defense to really stop Oregon State, because Oregon State, again, they had the opportunities, they just couldn't do anything. But it is what it is. It is what it is. And then, you know, Utah, Arizona State. Again, Arizona State's just going under all sorts of different problems right now. Cam Rising and company take care of business. The Sun Devils turned it over three times too many. And it was a wrap after that. Washington, they took care of Stanford. You know, Tyler Papa, he had over, he had 120 on the ground. Michael Penix had, a, had another 300-yard performance. And the Cardinal keep turning the ball over because they turned it all. They turned it over so many times against USC. They turned it over three times against Washington tonight. Terrible, terrible performance. I know. So that's it for this week. I know I'm gonna make Middle Tennessee, you know, the thumbnail for the night because they deserve it. You know, we deserve crazy thumbnails for the night. So you know. Middle Tennessee's my team of the week for real seas, you know. Um, and week five is actually looking pretty stacked. Now there's still a couple of games that are kind of, you know, in the in a weird question mark type situation, depending on where these teams are ranked. 
But we're going to get some new teams in the top 25. Miami's going to fall out. Texas is going to fall out. Florida's going to fall out, probably. Wait for us, probably going to fall out, you know. But, you know, we got a couple top 10 teams falling. And we're going to see some new faces in the top 10, which means we're looking, we might be looking at a top 10, you know, matchup next week. You know, I, I didn't think we would get to that, but we get, we're, we're going to get to that. We're going to get to that top 10 matchup, baby. You know, and I'm talking specifically about Clemson and NC State. But we'll talk about Clemson and NC State and, and all the other big matchups, you know, on Wednesday. You know, so until then. Big Boy Sports is going to sign out, and I'll see you all on Monday to discuss the NFL after my Cowboys play the New York Giants. Take care, everybody, and I'll see you on Monday. Good night.